So you are about to watch a super fun Blitz tournament I played recently where I had one ground rule for myself was to play a different aggressive gambit in every single game. And as you'll see, the games did not disappoint. Uh, I had every single crazy gambit you could think of from Halloween to Lafian to some made up gambits, uh, even played the computer cheater, which you'll see how that unfolds. And uh, I saved the craziest gambit for the final game in this tournament. So I've gone ahead and timestamped every single game in the video description. Feel free to hop around at your leisure, but also feel free to watch the whole thing through. I think you'll enjoy every game in this video. And before we get to the chess, I do want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is Audible. And for this ad read, I am going to teleport locations. So I want to give a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Now you might be wondering, what is this weird habitat I am in? Who is this weird creature beside me? Uh, this is one of my favorite places to take a walk and listen to an audiobook on Audible. This is Roxy, by the way. Roxy, say hi. Say hi. Now, if you're not familiar with Audible, they are a massive audiobook platform, have everything spoken word entertainment. Uh, whatever you're into, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, business, self-development, you can find something that piques your interest on Audible. And I'm super excited to recommend one of my new all-time favorite audiobooks that I just discovered recently and binged the whole thing in just a few days. Uh, the audiobook is called My Name's Tani and I Believe in Miracles. It's an incredible story of a young chess player, Tani Aduumi, who was a Nigerian refugee and moved to US, was living out of a homeless shelter and ultimately won the New York State Championship. He made world headlines a few years ago and his story is told in an just amazing uh, audiobook. It's so well produced, the narration is great. Now, if you want to try Audible for free for 30 days and get any audiobook of your choice, I do have a special offer for my viewers. You can click the link in the video description, audible.com slash I am Rosen, or text I am Rosen to 500, 500 and start listening today. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to some chess. Let's also get back to chasing squirrels, right? Right, Roxy? And here we go. I'm black. So Stafford, Dark Knight, Traxler. Opponent is not present. Uh-oh. Oh no, my opponent. I think the time just starts ticking, right? Yeah, they have... <laughs> They have two minutes and 55 seconds to make a move. Yeah, this first game is the opponent gambit. My opponent has already been sacrificed. Or maybe their Wi-Fi has been sacrificed. Also, officially, oh no, my opponent. Okay, I got the free win. That was a... I mean, yeah, that was, that was the opponent gambit. Back to tournament. Okay, it's gambit time. A lot of the gambits for white featured e4 openings, so I'll play Amora. That was a one gambit in Sicilian that was asked for. This is actually what I like to play as black. Uh, yeah, this is all standard. I think this is standard. I'll admit I don't know too much theory here, but I think I want to attack d6. Maybe queen e3. There's some funny knight move. Takes, takes. Okay, so I'm threatening to take. Not sure if this actually works, but it's interesting. So if a6, I take, 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 and then win back the pawn and pin the knight. Yeah, that's a move. I think I'm going to end up sacking on d4. Oh no, my exchange. The idea is now there's some compensation. Like black has really weak pawns. 
but I am down a decent amount of material. But this knight is very hard to remove. So it's a fun position to play. And this bishop is sad, which makes me happy. Like, I think I want to play, like, h3 might not be necessary. It's hard for black to even threaten, like, back ring mate. Queen c8 might be coming. But I think I can go ahead and do this. And then if queen c8 I take... Oh, wow. That's a bold decision. Play rook d1. Idea of rook lifting. Okay, now the queen is tied down to the bishop. The bishop has no legal moves. Yeah, this still looks really, really fun. My knight is kind of pinned to the queen. But that's okay. Yeah, I can't quite rook lift. I could play this move. Like making luft. And now... Maybe I should play a3. Give the bishop a square to move back to. There's some idea to play bishop b1 and e5. And then eventually checkmate. Like e5 immediately... How to do this? Yeah, I want to play e5 next. Still not crystal clear. Take... So if I play e5... It's getting spicy. It's getting really spicy. So I'm threatening to take. Queen moves here, I still take. And the dream is to checkmate on h7, which is about to turn into a reality. F2, that's one check, and then king f1. Oh, it's not so simple though, or is it? Yeah, this might be okay for black. There's one move here. Okay, I don't think that's the move. I was more scared of queen h4. Okay. I think queen h4 is maybe winning for black? I have knight f6, but king h8. Same thing with knight e7. Am I losing here? Wow. Queen h4 is just winning for black. That could have been a cool defensive idea to like take and then defend through x-ray vision on the h-file. Okay, so let's keep notes. Round one was opponent gambit. Round two was Smith Mora versus Sicilian. Okay, it's gambit time. There's no berserking in the Swiss tournament. Everyone plays the same number of games. Okay, so I think I'll start with, I mean, a Stafford, why not? <laughs> or one of those, should I play the corkscrew? What is a corkscrew? Let's, let's play the Lafian. And I'll go for a corkscrew. Opponent might not go for it, though. But it's after bishop here, and then I think it's queen e7, knight f7, then take. Like bishop c4, queen e7, I'm pretty sure is the line. Okay, this I'm already out of book. I mean, d6 looks playable, though. Okay. We have a position. Probably develop the, or bring back the bishop. D5 makes sense. It does allow 95, but then you can keep developing. 
That's a good move. It's actually a really annoying move. Bishop e6 takes takes. I think it's okay. Just solidifying. F3 might come at some point. F3 has come. Might have to take. Actually, it doesn't look so bad. Ready to castle. Got that file. There's some pressure against the knight. Let's reinforce things. Maybe bishop f7 soon. That allows knight f5, though. Maybe this move. Hitting h2. Preparing this. Okay, I want to do things against the king. There's a cool line, uh, rook e2, knight e4. Oh, that doesn't work, though. I thought I had bishop h2, but the rook's defended. Maybe it's okay somehow. I might just be losing a pawn. Yeah. Uh, check in here. I just lost a pawn. At least that aligns with my gambit uh, approach. <laughs> I have opened a file. At least another file, eventually. Actually, there is an idea to, like, take and then bishop c4. So I don't know if the pawn is capturable. Because now take, knight takes... Bishop c4. Ah, oh, there's knight h2. Take, take. Yeah, I don't think that works. My bishop's hit. But what else to do? Take, take. Maybe it's playable. Let's try it. Oh, no, it's not playable. There's queen c4. But maybe? Queen c4 leaves a knight undefended. Knight here I have this, thankfully. I'm trying to chase the bishop away. Now I have queen f4. Hitting this and this. So, I do have some nice initiative here. I mean, queen c4, king h7. Maybe it's okay. Also up a lot of time. Yeah, the risky play has kind of paid off. Up on time, winning back material, safe king. What is this move? Rookie one. Okay. That was nice. That was a funny game. So just to explain, the corkscrew... I only learned the name last night. As after this, this, this... I don't think Lee Chess will recognize it as a corkscrew, but it's where you sack the rook and then play d5, and then bishop g4. And black is winning here. But um, I think even stronger is queen takes e4 here. Anyway, this game, wow, white was crushing me. Bishop d2. Ah, bishop d2. I can't actually attack the knight. And white has two pieces for the rook. Actually, two pieces and a pawn for the rook. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Got the Lafian. Okay. Um, I'll see what opponent plays. Maybe I'll play... Maybe I'll go for Nackmanson. Ooh, opponent trying to gambit. Okay, maybe I'll go for Halloween. Okay, Halloween gambit time. I think this was the first gambit suggested earlier. 
think this is the best move. Hey, thank you, half loaf. Gifting five. I'm pretty sure I've had this position before, but it's been a while. I would think like the frequency of me playing the Halloween Gambit probably spikes in October, especially towards the end of October. Yeah, I want to play Queen C6 next. So Queen's tied down to the Rook. Maybe this move? I'm trying to paralyze black a little bit. Queen e4. I mean, I'm still down a piece. So there's some work to do. I want to push the h pawn. Do I care about my b pawn? Probably not. It's so important when you're playing gambits like this to have a. Uh, very aggressive mindset like if i don't have to play a defensive move i'd much rather play some move that generates a threat i am threatening to trap the knight if this knight moves might see knight c6 knight c6 there's a funny line where like i allow this and then i play like knight b5 and castle queen side probably doesn't quite work Maybe could still be funny. I was thinking g4 here. Wow. This is also kind of funny. So I could play f3. I think f3 makes sense. Just sacking the pawn. Take, take. Maybe I'll play this. It looks kind of risky. But I'm leaving the tension between the bishops. If queen b7, I play b3, bishop a3, king b1. If takes, takes knight f7, eventually I want to storm with f pawn. Yeah, maybe start by taking. I could play knight a. F no, not knight a four doesn't work. Uh, what to do? Bishop d two. Sacking this pawn. I feel like I need my bishop to defend the dark squares. Wow. Very fancy. Have this move to start. I'm ready to take the knight. Being down material for so long makes me it makes me grateful for times when material's actually kind of balanced. Especially now when I'm on material. I take the knight now and then g7 and then take this pawn uh, and then take the other pawn uh how to do this i should probably move back i do want to take h6 very soon I want to play this soon. I don't think I care about the g4 pawn. Gotta watch my time though. Yeah, hitting the rook now. Maybe I could have taken verse with check. This is looking really nice. It's all the major pieces cutting off the king. Okay, that was a successful Halloween. 
Halloween came a little bit early. Okay, so that was four rounds. 68 players here. It's still not too late to join. Uh, approaching round five, starting in two seconds. And now let's go for a Budapest. Ooh. Uh, uh, how do I gambit? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of a gambit, right? Okay, let's make up a gambit. Let's play the G5. I don't want you to do the Stonewall Gambit. <laughs> There's so much nice symmetry here. Now knight e4 hitting the pawn. I want to play h6. The problem with h6 is g6. Maybe it's still fine. Wow. So it's kind of like a Banco, but on the king side. I can live with this. I have queen a5 here. Takes, takes. And it's already a funny position. Takes, takes, takes. And queen a5 makes some sense. Because I want to win e3 pawn. So knight d2 I take on e3. Yeah, the only way for white for black to or for white to defend is to take with a king. But then I'm gonna have some. I don't know how to do this? It's still not so simple. Take take. I can start by taking. Maybe start with this. Uh, I don't know. I was really conflicted there. So I'm allowing knight b5, which is not played. I'm still down a pawn. Might be ready to castle with check. Very strange position. I'm down a minute on the clock, so I'm gambling some time as well. That's a good move. Bishop. e6 first. Bishop d3 might be coming or not. A5. I think the bishop makes sense on e5. There's some rook h4 idea. So then later double up. Okay, now hitting this pawn. If g4, I play rook h8. Uh, wow, can I take that? Taking makes sense. King e3, I take on h1. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay, maybe I keep rooks on the board. I, I want a key center pawn. Okay, rook d2 idea. Some nice central control here. There's a d4 maybe next. I was almost mating. I'm going to win the rook though. King f1 or rook f2. Okay, that was nice. 
I just made up a gambit. <laughs> what is this? On G5. Is this a novelty? Let's see. Lee Chess has been played 42 times before. It's really hard to play a novelty based on the Lee Chess database. Anti Stonewall Gambit. Okay, next game starts in six seconds. Oh, you are the ASMR Gary. Oh, wow. So it's the same Gary. You just changed your name. I think that makes sense. I should have realized that. Okay. We'll play E4 again. And this time I will play... Oh, I'll play that funny uh, Tennyson Gambit. Who takes Knight G5. Wait, what? Uh, Can I transpose? I can't transpose. What is this? How do I gambit? Okay, I'll play e6 maybe. Can I play e6 here? Um, I want to sack a queen. e6 takes... Okay, <laughs> we're having fun. Oh, it's kind of dubious. But, I mean, it was the only clear opportunity to gambit. Maybe g4, g4, h4, h6. Um, Yeah, I don't know how much sense this makes. Yeah. I'll just try and roll with it. At least I got some kingside potential. Maybe I'll castle queenside. Opponent's playing well, though. I do another five. Okay, this is something. F4, maybe D4. F4 doesn't quite work. Play F4. And this first, if takes, I have this. King B8 expected. Ooh. Okay, this is something. Can I take and then take? Oh, it's messy. Oh, this is also messy. Um, taking on b7 doesn't work. Take the knight. Maybe I take the knight and f5, shutting out the bishop, making the pawn smile. Queen here, here. And there's also this move. Knight b5. Play this first. I'm down a minute. Oh, that's a good move, too. Knight b5 is coming. Maybe there's some idea to like target the dark squares. Okay. Black just gave back the pawn. Hitting this pawn now. Uh, 
Wow. Tricky, tricky. Hitting this pawn. I want to put the rook here. Might be threatening to take two. It's getting weird. Okay. Okay, we can trade everything. My pawns are so happy. Yeah, it's not stalemate. <laughs> A G5 on plus on. Okay, that was nice. That was a funny game. Uh, I don't even know what to call that. Weird Carol Khan Gambit. Yeah, I thought this would be like dangerous for my rating, but so far I've been gaining a few points. Um, what to play next? I'll probably be black. Um, still due for a Budapest. Hey, it's Budapest time. Okay. Budapest Gambit. This is a main line. Opponent knows what they're doing. Wait, what? I don't think I've ever seen Rook D1 before. I wonder if that was a mouse slip. I wonder if this is like weird prep. Huh. Queen D2. Take, take. That's interesting. I'm going to lose C7. Yeah, I think I just got outprepped in the Budapest. Maybe it's still playable. I'm still down a pawn. But no time to cry. I have to save my tears. Uh, there's this move. Yeah, it makes sense. Hit the rook. Rook d1, knight here, threatening mate. Also threatening a pawn. Okay, so the plan is actually very positional to target this pawn. I get bishop d3, probably knight c5. Maybe knight a5 soon. Hey, car 101. Oh, maybe I should have been following that. I saw that they were close in the standings. Good job to Fabi. So, 92. Takes, takes. Hmm. I feel like I should take. Like rook c8. And the pawn should fall eventually. White well, has an interesting option, like whether to castle or to develop the rook along the h-file. And my plan is pretty clear, though. Ooh, have to watch out for that. H6.
Yeah, so bishop d5, king h8, threatening this and this, or this. Knight d3 is a triple for two, which is not easy to stop. My rook here. I can also take on f2. I think this makes some sense. Let's move back. I mean, based on the structure, this should be very pleasant for black. Now the bishop looks strong, though. I want to make sure the knight is uh, attacking the pawn. Might see this move. Okay, now, maybe I just take... Uh, d6 is hanging. Take, take, take. I think I can take like this. Now d5. Not super clear. Oh, wow. Fancy move. Yeah, G4 is a mistake. Okay, that was a close one. Man, opponent out perhaps me in the Budapest. I don't really have much time to analyze because next game is starting really soon. Uh, but real, real quick, what was my improvement after Rook D1? Oh, I should play F6 sooner. Okay, good to know. Okay, next game. So this is my gambit list so far. I'm white again. Playing. Oh, let's play an ortho schnapp. Ortho schnapp gambit time. This is a fun gambit against the French. For a while, it was like very, like not so well known, like incredibly rare. And then Jonathan Trance made a video about it. Now it's a little bit more. At least a little bit more recognized. Um, this is one of the main lines. Right? I sack the e pawn, have this uh, tension against f7. Uh, knight d5 looks really attractive. Play knight d5 right away. Ready to take on c7, maybe? Maybe d4? Let's try this and then king f1. If I'm Passant, I, I play king f1. That's still not clear. Hmm. I'm thinking knight c5, queen d1. Going back to where I came from. But I want to play bishop f4 with complete destruction. Wow. So I can take. Also, 
maybe play this move. But let's take first. I think I should just win the rook. Um, looking for better though. There's 94 in the end, which is a little bit unsettling. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. Play bishop b5. There's rook b1. Okay, I think I'll play rook b1 first. So if I took the rook, there was 94 threatening this and this. Okay, now I can play this. Wow. Oh. I don't see what to do. Take 93 and knight f3. Opponents played really well. I'm down on time. Okay, at least there's some compensation, maybe. I have to take with bishop. Down a ton of time here. The opening completely backfired. So I'm down three pawns and about a minute. It could be worse. What? Why did Black resign? That's so weird. What just happened? Opponent played the resignation gambit. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> that might explain why I was getting completely outplayed. <laughs> oh, it happened mid-game too. I guess that doesn't happen too often. Interesting. Uh, did every move just match the engine? I guess it did. Is knight d7 top engine move? Okay, it's one of the top. Oh, kudos to Lee Chess for being super, super prompt. Yeah, I was getting completely crushed. Wow. Okay, I guess that's why I couldn't find anything. Like, like I was going to play knight c7. At first, it looks crushing for white. The problem is knight e4. Or apparently queen d4. And then... Yeah, if I play knight h3, there's knight d2. Okay. Well, thank you, Lee Chess, for supervising the games. Being very prompt there. <laughs> Yeah, this should go without saying, but if you're going to play chess online, uh, play fair. Don't use the engine because uh, you will get caught eventually <laughs> or immediately. Okay, it's gambit time. 
Uh, I have to keep up with my list. I haven't played the Stafford yet. Ooh, can I play Lucchini? I'm going to preserve the F-Pawn push. Ooh, what is this? What is this? 92. I think I'll play this. Okay, it's reverse King's Gambit. Or reverse Vienna Gambit, because my knight's developed. And now d5. And there's no queen h5, because the knight's in the way. So it's maybe already improved. Okay, this looks pleasant. I gambited, but I won back the pawn. A really nice development here. All minor pieces developed. I'll try and watch my time a bit more carefully. Also thinks it's Jackal, the first time prime sub. I want to do fun things. I think I'll start with this and then just castle. Yeah, I have the bishop here now. A knight is enjoying life. This would lose a queen to knight c2. Queen has to move back to one of these squares. I'll keep improving. I really want to take on g3. But... I don't see how it works. So maybe I'll reposition the knight to f4. Oh, thank you, pass pong quadruple nine. Yeah, uh, the stream labs alerts are down, but I do appreciate all the subs and resubs. Okay, a lot of potential targets here. That's some nice coordination, the pieces. Looking for the knockout below. Like takes maybe queen g4? Threatening this. Rook h4, maybe queen g7. Keeping the battery. Still threatening to take. I think taking on f2 would destabilize. Ooh, d4. Trying to destabilize my position. Yeah, lingering tension here. Okay, play solidly. I'm waiting for some opportunity, like maybe a five. Not sure though. Prove the bishop. Wow. Okay, black is the one who sacks, or white's the one who sacks. Having color identity issues. Okay, now I can take. Win a pawn. Maybe win another pawn. There's rook g1. I'll move back. Up the exchange, up on time. Thank you. 
Okay. Another one down. So what have I not played yet? Still haven't played the Stafford. Played the Mora, Jerome, Nachmanson. I think I'll keep playing E4. Oh, Traxler too, yeah. Oh, let's play a Tennyson. It was between Tennyson and Blackmore Deemer. I guess like this is one way to kind of decline the Tennyson. Oh, this isn't really a Gambit type position at all, but I tried. I think this is a pretty standard like queenless middle game position though. It's very positional. I do have A4s to like, gradually grab space on the queen side. Black's gaining space on the king side. Yeah, I do want to play B4. Maybe B5. Might require a little bit of preparatory moves. I think I'll go for rook B1 and then like B5 and just try and get a an attack against Black's King. Take with I'll take with Bishop. So even though we traded Queens early, uh I'm still playing aggressively. Actually all the pieces could potentially come into play. I take the knight. I might just play Bishop F1. I didn't see a clear combination there. Hitting the pawn, I do knight b6 as well. Knight b6, king b8. That's close. Feels really close. Takes, takes, bishop a6. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So if king b8, I take and bishop a6. Controlling g8. Yeah, it didn't win anything, but the, the position seems really, really nice. But I can take over the g file, hopefully. Oh, what to do? This move. Hitting the rook. Or hitting the bishop with my rook. It's still equal material, but I have the two bishops, and I have... What what else do I have? Some infiltration, rook, B, rook g6. I have kind of a shish kebab on the sixth rank. Yeah, this is really close to winning something. Still not quite, though. But black's completely tied down. I'll win the pawn. Ah, this move is coming. Bishop f6. Threatening rook h7. 
Oh, Bach's still alive, though. It feels close to getting mated, but thankfully I'm not getting mated. I have this move, too. Rook h6. Okay, I'm definitely winning something here. Uh, what to do? Take. Okay. Oh, it was made next. Or no, it was king a4. It was made very soon, though. Okay. Yeah, Botez Gambit. Maybe I'll save that for the final game. Just sack my queen. <laughs> Depending who I'm playing. Okay. Uh, I'm white. I mean, I'll play e4 again. Maybe go for... Ah, um... oh, let's try this Tennyson thing again. Like d3. It's like d3, knight f3. Yeah, this. Okay, so this is accepted. These are the two most common moves on Leechess. Both of them run into funny tactics. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh no, Black's Queen. Wait a minute, did I mess this up? Duh, I messed it up! There's Force Made after Queen H5. I forgot, I studied this yesterday. It's still completely winning though. Okay. <laughs> I think there's like Maiden 6 or something, right? I literally had this position on on stream, like just an analysis last night. Yeah, it's Maiden 6. So Queen H5, and then Queen G6. Then we, oh, we sack the bishop. And if they take it, it's mate. And if they move here... Where's the mate? Queen e4? Ah, queen b4 mate. That's a nice finish. Okay, that was fun. Do most people fall into this? Wow, most people fall into this. 13,000 people play knight f6. Walking into knight takes f7. That's really nice. Because the, the two most common moves for black in this position both walk into this trick. Yeah, the top move is knight e7, which is very hard to play. Takes. White's winning the queen. Uh, it's so nice to get this <laughs> the day after analyzing. But next time I'll, I'll remember the maiden six. Oops, let's unmute. Oh, I'm playing chess prince. Okay, I'll play, uh, I'll play this. I'll then counter gambit. But there's a cool line, I think 97. This is like a new idea, I think. But I forget the idea. <laughs> What's the idea? Bishop f5? Bishop g4? Maybe knight c6. I know there's some line where you, like, you're supposed to trade queens. This move was played in the World Cup. I think Muzichuk against Tong Zhang Yi. Like one of the semi-final matches. It's weird to like go for the queen trade when you're down a pawn, but there's some idea to target c2. And of course, e5 is still a, a target as well. Oh yeah, maybe Chessweed has uh, talked about this before. Actually, I first learned this from uh, a college teammate, Alexander Shimanov. He was showing this once. Okay, I'm ahead in development. I'm just wanting to win back a pawn. And bishop f4 is prevented. Maybe I can take... Hmm. Maybe just this. Bishop f4 may be coming. Or not. Yeah, bishop b5 is a good move. Okay. 
Okay, offering the knight trade. This does allow f3. f3, bishop e6. Knight moves, I win e4. It's still very tricky. It still has a lot of gambit vibes. Ooh, that's a good move. Bishop's coming in. I play this move. Take, take. Let's try it. Maybe I can just get the bishop pair. Time is good. Um, it's one of the benefits of playing a very offbeat opening. It can cause my opponent to use more time in the opening. So I have the bishop pair. Knight e3, probably rook here. Okay, I'm going to go for uh, this move. F4 is coming though. Maybe this move. Keeping an eye on the pawn. Hmm. Okay, hitting the knight. Still not great. Threatening bishop b5. have to take. What is my rook doing on a4? That's kind of just chilling, actually. Oh, no. Should not have allowed that. Really? I don't want to get too passive here. What's happening? I'm up a rook. I'm up two rooks. Okay. <laughs> that was a funny game. I was probably in a lot of trouble there. It was an interesting opening, though. Uh, Albin counter gambit. I mean, there's no time, but uh, real quick, we can see 97. It's been played a handful of times, including by Dubov, a like master level play. Yeah, Muzi Chuk against Tan Zhang Yi. Actually, I photographed the players in that game at the World Cup in Sochi. Okay. Keep going. Da, how do I gambit against this move? Let's play this. <laughs> oh, new opening. Uh, D4. I'll just play like a Danish. 
Wait, how do I do this? Play this. I used to do this and then win the queen. <laughs> I just gambited both center pawns. That's really dubious. Thank you, Chicken Isa. Okay, so if takes, I win the queen. Probably not going to happen, though. If e5, maybe queen b3 is kind of cool. Yeah, this defends the queen. So, what to do? This move? I just have to accelerate development. Ooh. There, there, there. I want to do it. Doesn't work, though. I think I should just castle. Maybe we'll see this move. Targeting the bishop and pinned knight. Yeah, e6 very safe. Okay, we'll target the bishop. And 95 might be coming and B4, maybe B4 and A4 is interesting. There's Queen G3 first. I'm looking at 95, Bishop B5, C6, Queen G3. I'm not sure what to make of this. It's probably really dubious. Wow. It's actually a good move. Bishop d6 is coming. So what to do? F4. F4 is in the air. Ooh. So I'm down two pawns. Pawns defended three times, also attacked three times. I'm kind of trapping in my own bishop, but the idea is to play h5 next. Going full attack mode. Alpha zero style. Got the battery. Okay, so I'm threatening to take and then queen f6. Or take take and then queen f6. Yeah, tension's mounting. I think this better work. No, the queen still take. Hmm. Ah, not a five coming. It's still interesting though. I'm just losing like most of my pawns. Maybe G4 soon. I don't want to trade queens, but I might have to. Yeah, I kind of have to. Wow. 
What's happening here? There's a funny line. Oh, it doesn't work though. Oh no. I'm actually in trouble. Okay. Now I'm in less trouble. Box completely stuck here. But how do I make progress? Oh, I guess I went on time. So what Black could have done was play rook f8 check. Force to trade the rooks, play king f7, and then... I think against a strong player I, I would have lost that. Even despite the time situation. Anyway, uh, next game starting. We gotta save the craziest gambit for the end. Whatever that may be. Maybe I'll like just combine as many gambits as possible towards the end. So this is a penultimate game. Um, I mean, gotta do England, right? So one, one thing that's left. I'll play. Um, I'll go for this d6 line. It's kind of interesting. Queen d7 castling. Okay. It's already looking nice. Let's start with this. Let me start with knight f6. I guess white wants to castle queenside too. Queen e2 might be. Ooh. Now I can play g5. Like a g. The idea is very simply to play g4 and destroy the king side, get the rook to g8, etc. etc. Thank you, Poison Pain Live. Also, thank you, Murphy. Appreciate the subs. Was there a raid? Oh, there was a raid. Thank you, Thinker, Thinker Teacher. Appreciate that. Yeah, Streamlabs alerts are broken, but. Uh, so I can still see it in chat. Okay, let's take and play g4. Now the knight could move, but okay. I could also stay where it is. Yeah, this is looking really fun because I have the g file, got the bishops pointed towards the king. Queen can come into play. I might start with a move like Queen E6 just to maneuver to H6. Wow. That's a bold decision. I think I can play F5 here. Because if Bishop D3, I win the Queen. Otherwise, I win the Bishop. Thank you, Bora Buga. Yeah, this is this is pretty much GG. I wouldn't be surprised if White resigns here. And maybe is there any fight left? Oh, there's some fight left. I'm still threatening this. Um, now I can play this move. And the problem for White is if the queen moves away from defending the knight, I take it because of the pin. If queen d5, I win the queen again. Yeah, checkmate is imminent. 
That was a pretty nice England Gambit. Uh, yeah, this this D6 line, I think it, it offers more long-term compensation. There's other lines in the England with more like clear traps, but this was more just a nice attacking setup. And especially with opposite, opposite size castling and G4, um, the G4 pawn break was really nice. So, okay. Gotta save the best for last. What should I do? <laughs> Bond Cloud, Botez, Jerome. I'm playing Ronaldo Aguara something. Okay, I'll go for Jerome. Oh, no Jerome. Okay, I'll gamble all my pawns. We're repeating this. D4. <laughs> queen D4, novelty. Okay, I don't want a queen trade. Let's play queen H5. Wait, this is just a really bad opening for me. Queen G5? <laughs> I feel like I'm playing like a beginner. It gives me some nostalgia. Yeah, good move. I have this move. I'm violating so many opening principles. I feel like at some point I'm going to Botez Gambit. Okay, I want to play c3 next. Chase this queen away. Maybe win the knight. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's gambit more pawns. And maybe a rook. Does that work? That looks fun. I am f I'm s straight up sacking a rook. <laughs> Take my rook. It might work, but it might not. Oh no, my rook. Okay, what more can I gambit? And there's bishop b5. Maybe this move first. I'm just down a rook here, but I'm threatening to trap the queen. Yeah, the queen might be hard to trap. Let's play this. Idea queen c4. Ooh. I really don't want to trade queens. That's a really annoying move. Because I want it I wanted to Botez Gambit, but it's not gonna work. I'm down a rook. Yeah, that's a really good move. I'm playing that f3. Okay, so I'm down a rook, I'm down on time. I've sacked enough. Now it's time to try and come back. H4 incoming. Ooh. And light squares are very tender. B4. If I want to attack on the queen side. Not so simple though. Play b5 soon? It might be three first. Okay. 
That's a good move. Can I take on e7? Remind me later. Take. No. Okay, let's gamble the pawn. <laughs> Just opening the file. And now this move. Stop hurting me. Stop it. Stop it. Do oh, my rook. Okay, it's all part of the gambit. There's a funny Ampasan check. Not quite Ampasan checkmate. Not even quite anything. Oh no, my bishop. How do I stalemate myself? It's not even stalemate. Did I win that? I won that. <laughs> oh, it's a clutch pawn. It's checkmating material. Wow. <laughs> what a way to finish the tournament. I gambited everything. Except the H-pawn. Okay. It's a beautiful ending. I feel kind of bad for my opponent. We'll call that the everything gambit. Okay. Well, I hope people enjoy that. I'll probably put that on YouTube. If you're watching in the future on YouTube... Let me know if you made it this far. Also, let me know what your favorite gambit was. I know I didn't get to all the gambits I wrote previously, but these are the gambits that I played.